online as I am as any time I can get online. The last few days, I did, well, the last quite a long time, there's been no internet for the likes of me. But before, I was kicked off the internet by being in Timbuktu, uh, living in the Sahara Desert as I was. Uh, I saw a little thing about uh, the wonderful country of Ireland, something about the blasphemy law, which I found <laughs> to be extremely jumping back into the Stone Age, regrowing the gills and primordial tail, and slinking back into the primordial ooze for a country so in love with IT and all things, uh, you know, Mac, PC, and blazing forward down the information highway. And so it is a form of censorship. Now for me, to blaspheme, as I understand it, is to talk mean or somehow uh, vulgar, in a vulgar manner about someone's religion or someone in, in the religion business or something. And I, I have no interest in that, in that if you are a religious person, I am not. Um, I'm not here to rain on your parade. It just doesn't, it doesn't work for me. My beef with religion is usually in America when uh, the line between church and state becomes semi-obscured, when uh, they want to bring uh, Christian theology into the courtroom, into the hospital, when they start telling uh, women that they are bad for wanting to have procedures done to their bodies. And I, it's, always, it's always an organism with testicles telling an organism with ovaries what to do with her ovaries, because burn in hell. And, and that's, that's when I stand up and say, man, you gotta, you gotta cool it, because line between church and state, come on, Thomas Jefferson laid it out, and he's spinning in his grave, shut up. But past that, I'm not here to mess with you. And so the idea of going to jail for, for or I'm sorry, for being fined for blaspheming, very, very interesting to me. As you know, in America, we have a thing called the Constitution. Seven articles, 27 amendments. The first one is a really sexy one. And uh, I, I, I know bits of the Constitution. I am one of those people, I actually do carry it with me. I have, well, not in my gig bag, but it's back at the hotel. And the First Amendment, I'll probably screw it up because I'm nervous, but the First Amendment says, Congress shall make no law respecting an establishment of religion or the free exercise thereof, or abridging freedom of speech or of the press or of the right of the people peaceably to assemble, to petition the government for a redress of grievances uh, in street talk, basically <laughs> re re religiousize how you want, where you want, uh, freedom to say what you want to whomever you want, who cares what they think. The press has the same liberty they will not be disappeared into the night a la Stalin or Putin. And you have the right to gather and go up to a place of government and say, hey man, I want a redo on that because that was some bullshit. And Americans hold that freedom quite dearly. And you can hear Americans using their First Amendment in restaurants when they're abroad. They're the loud ones being incredibly rude. Hey, look, Garcon, it's my fucking First Amendment right for you not to serve me this fucked up food, you French faggot. That is the First Amendment hard at work. <laughs> and, and so the idea that one can be fined, and I, I've read a lot of editorials by really, really good Irish writers who basically said, are you kidding me, man? And I don't know if it's in effect. I don't know if people have been fined. I think I would have read that if it happened. But here's what I find really fascinating, because I, I come from America, and I'm all about that freedom, my twisted version of it. I believe that freedom is cool as long as you don't inflict your freedom upon other people. I mean, don't, I, I don't want to make my freedom your problem. You know what I mean? Anyway, there was an interesting thing that happened in April of last year. There's a, a famous American racist. His name is David Duke, and he used to be the grand doodah the Grand Wizard of the Ku Klux Klan, and then he eventually became a congressman in America, which is kind of the coup of white power people, to get their people into mainstream positions. So you grow your hair out, you go suit and tie, and you, go, you infiltrate the mainstream to spread your propaganda. And he's one of those guys, like uh, the British National Party moron. I'm not a racist. I'm just standing up for white rights and white people. You know, and you're like, no, no, you're a racist. No, 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 no. As long as these, these niggers know their place, we're cool. But, you know, but, you know, I'm not, you know, you know what I mean? It's a side door. I mean, you wish they would just like sit highly and come in through the front door and you just say, look, 
here it is. And, and I, I don't respect or admire white power guys who uh, call out the 7 o'clock news by Sikh hiling with their swastikas on their arms. But at least they're saying it. Look, here's where I'm coming from. But David Duke is trying to artfully say that he's not a racist when he is, in fact, you know, an awful racist. He's also an anti-Semite, so he can multitask. And his, <laughs> and his line on, on anti-Semitism, well, I'm not an anti-Semite, but you got to admit, those Jews, dot, 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 insert whatever fake crime they perpetrated. And so he apparently wrote a book, I have not read it, I don't want to read it, uh, called My Awakening. And basically, My Awakening, I woke up one day to find out that Jews are bloodsuckers! And so he went to the Czech Republic to have uh, to do three lectures. Uh, his book has been translated uh, there, and he's a he's a big hero of white power enthusiasts in beautiful Prague. If you've never been there, it's a beautiful city, wonderful people, except for the Nazis. <laughs> and so he goes there, and while he's having dinner with some of his white power bros, uh, the cops come in and arrest him and throw him in jail because apparently somewhere in that book. He denies the Holocaust. And they put him in jail long enough to book him a ticket, put him on an airplane, and send him back to my country. Like, I need this guy. And so he was not tortured or waterboarded or given any kind of enhanced interrogation. They just said, y y you know, you can't do that here. I find out that in uh, Austria, or sorry, in Czech Republic and in other countries, it is a against the law to deny the Holocaust. It carries a potential jail sentence. And so if you see any article about this in any blog or whatever, there's lots of articles about David Duke getting kicked out of the Czech Republic back to America, almost every posting underneath it, there'll be like 10 in the same post, one guy striving for clarity, and then like 10 more posts, like, you suck, you got this, and then, you know, and on and on. And they all say, he's a hero, he's a martyr, the Czech Republic are a bunch of pussies, they obviously couldn't handle him, and it's truth. And I don't agree with that, but I don't, and, and this is, it gets tricky and murky, and this one I think is just fascinating, and that's why I don't want to spend too much time on it, because I know you're falling asleep. But I do believe that the Holocaust happened. Uh, and just because I went to Auschwitz and walked all over for hours doesn't mean that I know anything, but I know a little bit about history, and I've heard some, quite a few tales, and I think the Holocaust happened. I'm one of those people who believed it happened. Now, if you don't think it happened, and you want to put that in a book, I don't, want, I don't want to read the book, but I don't think you should go to jail for saying it. And I think you should be able to walk down the street with a t-shirt that says, hey, um, the Holocaust didn't happen, bite me. And, I don't, and people go, oh, you're lame, you're not coming to my party, but I don't think you should be thrown in jail. And, and so, because I think the First Amendment should protect that speech. Now, it's interesting to me that in some countries, they're so sick of this bullshit that they're basically saying, like, we're sick of this. We're sick of, of this horror that you keep trying to perpetrate. You want to talk like that, Nazi boy? You go ahead. We'll throw your ass in jail. I know that if you be in the deep upon it, fuck you. <laughs> and that I like too. Because, <laughs> because with people like that, you just want to shut them the fuck up. But you're free to say this stuff. And I believe in the freedom, but I also like the idea of, like, go to jail. And so the plausible defense is, well, it's just words. If you don't like what he's saying, don't read the book. I agree. There's a guy named Rush Limbaugh in America. Yeah, he's not. He, he's a real treat, isn't he? Uh, he he's a right-wing radio host, incredibly popular in America, gets a, a, a gajillion dollar paycheck. I don't listen to him. He's really not my problem. Do I want to kick him off the air? Hell no, because I don't want to get kicked off the air. I don't believe in censorship. I believe in raising your children well and having uh, a, a common sense and understanding the, the full awesome burden of freedom and the responsibility of it. And so words have no effect, it's only actions. I, I